Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night wherever you are around the world. Welcome to Pro Tour Nagoya here in Japan. And listen, thank you so much for joining us around the world. We know it's late in some parts of the world. It's early in others. We're here. Well, around about quarter to 11 in the morning. So great to have you with us. Rich Hagen and Pro Tour Historian Mr. Brian David Marshall with you. BDM, we've had 10 rounds of block constructed, 6 rounds of draft, 3 more rounds of draft to go. Awesome. Awesome. And a, and a super exciting top 8. We've got a, a really great mix of Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. future Hall of Famers, <laughs> uh, first timers, wonderkins. Wonderkins. We could start with the Wonderkind, the man who uh, appeared in eighth place. Oh, that looks suspiciously like a bracket arriving. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Um, eighth place, sneaking in on 36 points, uh, was Fabian Thiele of Germany. 25-year-old, uh, and uh, you had a good chat with him yesterday. I, I did. He's a, uh, he's a student, plays magic. He describes the way he plays magic as casually. Huh. Uh, some, I don't think some, that's true. Uh, something of a chess player. Uh, plays with uh, Jan Moritz Merkel in Hamburg, and uh, he's become friends with Simon Gertzen, who, uh, stayed here uh, in uh, Japan with him and mm -hmm. several of the other German players. The Grafensteiner the brothers. The yeah. Yep. He played in his first pro tour in Paris and finished in 20th place. Pretty awesome for the first try. Which then rolls over into an invitation to this pro tour. Sure. A little bit of money to pay for a trip to this pro tour. And he's just been on point at every stage of this tournament. The fun bit, though, is, yes, that's true, but he's been doing it and loving every second. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's having a great time. He's playing against Rob Darty, mm -hmm. Hall of Famer Rob Darty, in the last round of the Swiss. Uh, second to last round of the Swiss. Playing for top eight. Playing for the opportunity to shake hands and have a seat in the top eight. Yeah. And he's up a game, and they go to game two, and he offers his hand to Rob Darden, and he says, have fun. Oh, and meant it. And meant it. It was, it was yeah. a sincere gesture. It was not, it was not a, uh, no. there was not a sarcastic bone in his body when he did it. Yeah, absolutely great story. So Germany in the top eight. Let's go to number seven. You've got David Scharfman, the first of our American players, the youngest player in the top eight, 21, Maitland, Florida, he comes from. Been around a long while, uh, very sort of the, the hotshot kid on the constructed scene in the U.S. a while back, sort of U.S. Nationals 2008, he made the top eight there. Right, we've been, we've been talking about Scharfman for some time, I and mean, even before 2008, he was the guy who ran the table and constructed at Nationals, mm. uh, didn't have the, the limited game. Uh, which sure. kind of uh, tripped him up a couple times at Nationals, even before that. It's draft today. Yeah. Well, he, he's, he's become quite a drafter. We saw him uh, display his limited skills in Paris when he won Grand Prix Paris, the largest uh, One of the largest Grand Prix of ever. all time, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, that would have been a massive story had it not been the same weekend as Pro Tour Paris, and, right. and he got dwarfed by the incredible performance of Ben Stark. Uh, and uh, he is ready to win. He came here, we talked uh, on Thursday, the day before the PT together. You know, I said, you know, great to see you. How are you getting on? And well done, Paris, and all that kind of stuff. He said, oh, yeah, I'm here to win. He, he really was here to win. Uh, Pure Steel Paladin deck? Pure Steel Paladin deck. He played in Block Constructed. The deck was designed by Mark, Her Mark Herberholtz. Uh -huh. It's a guy who knows a thing or two about Block Constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, picked up by Antonina DeRosa, who qualified for this event at a Philippines PTQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, he introduced uh, Patrick Co Pat Cox uh, and David Sharfman to the deck, as well as a couple other players. It was really one of the best performing decks. Their specific build of it was one of the best performing decks in the tournament. At one point, it was 31 and 14 in matches uh, with a very, very small sample size of players. Yeah, it's a deck well worth checking out. Yeah, and, and they both went X and 1, I believe, in, in Constructed. Yeah. Let's go, let's go to uh, player 6. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do... Uh, is look at the sixth seed. This is Toshiyuki Kadaoka uh, of Japan. Uh, not one of the, the better known names. And in a sense, Japan is sort of rebuilding a little bit at the moment. You've, you've got your kind of old school Hall of Famers. You've, you've got the last few players of the year. You've got Shuhei Nakamura. You've got um, Yuya Watanabe. Um, but we're kind of looking for the next group of Japanese players to step up to the plate. And here we are. Well, I mean, he certainly could be one of the next, but he's also one of the one of the older players. He's been playing for over he's been playing for over a decade. Uh, has been, you know, a fixture of the Japanese PTQ scene. Has qualified for a handful of pro tours. I think first qualified for the pro tour in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple, you know, a handful of, you know, strong 
you know, ish, strongish finishes, but nothing, nothing notable. I mean, this is this is a, you know, long awaited moment for Kataoka. And he, he played Kaldatha Red in the tournament, which was kind of interesting because we didn't see a lot of that. When we saw people playing the red deck, we really saw mm. like these big red decks. Part of the reason you didn't see a lot of it is that he tended to win on turn four. Panic, panic spell bomb. There's a Kaldotha Rebirth. Oh, here we are. Here's a Goblin War Driver. Smash, smash, smash. Thank you very much, Gilly. Uh, it was uh, pretty brutal the way he got into the top eight. Uh, fifth uh, seed is Pat Cox, uh, our second American. Um, and uh, he, of course, has just recently won the Star City Games Invitational. Uh, a couple of G GP top eight last year, Oakland and Toronto. Uh, and he's someone who seems, uh, he's a fairly quiet guy, but he has a lot of self-confidence sort of hidden away under there, you know? A lot of self-confidence, a, a very good sense of humor, a very yeah. even keel, mm. uh, and, uh, you know, having a really great birthday week. That's right, it was his birthday on Sa day sandwich one. Sandwich between and win winning the Invitational and making the top eight of this event, he celebrated a birthday. Four and two in draft, eight one and one in constructed. Again with that pure steel paladin right. uh, deck. Uh, so, you know he'll fancy his chances. Now the next guy up, fourth seed uh, in the Swiss, Ellie Pichon of France. Uh, zero lifetime pro points. Not very many, but now quite a lot more. Um, so uh, Ellie has has come in, uh, done a tremendous job. He's twenty three. He's from Toulouse, uh, and. I love when a PTQ winner makes it to the top eight because the odds are actually quite stacked against PTQ winners because you have so many Hall of Famers, so many Pro Tour champions, so many Grand Prix winners. And, you know, you win your first PTQ and you really you're trying to make day two. And, and, and I liken it to playing a video game. Mm -hmm. uh, you play a video game, you become very adept at playing at a level of the video game. You, you beat the you, you clear the level, you go mm -hmm. to the next level. Holy cow! The monsters are bigger. The the the, the missiles are faster. The the, the the death comes quicker. Fewer power ups. <laughs> yeah, it's and, and you know so so to be able to take it from the from the pro tour qualifier to the pro tour and to be able to succeed at that level. I mean, you need to be quite good. And and Eli Pichon, uh, when I was watching him play, was was very crisp, uh, very very matter of fact, uh, going going through his games. And he he uh, he won a. a in the last round, he did not know if he was going to make it in. That's right. Yeah. And he had to uh, he had to play against uh, Francesco Cipolleschi, mm -hmm. who is sort of the hard luck tail of this event. I tell you what, let's uh, let's see if we can get up how the players actually got to this top eight. We'll, We're slow uh, rolling we'll, the top we'll, three. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll give you the top eight because um, uh, we, we've sort of got how they all got there. Because of course we had five rounds of block constructed uh, to start with. Then we go into draft. But then we come back on day two. Three more rounds of draft. Five rounds of block constructed. Let's uh, see if we've got the how they got their little package for you. Uh, let's see if that's uh, coming up. There we go. So uh, that, in fact, is your top eight. Now, the first round is pretty key. Pretty much, you have to win. And almost everyone does. No win for David Sharfman, so he's already behind the eight ball, as it were. But then we have four more rounds of block constructed. And at the end of that, there you see down the bottom, Fabian Thieler of Germany setting the pace along with LSV and Gaudanis Vidagiris. Everyone else, four and one. If you were at three and two, you might as well forget about it. So then, BDM, we get into draft. Let's see what the next three rounds do to us. That's the end of day one. And truthfully, when Fabian Thieler sat down to play LSV in round eight for who's going to be the only undefeated player left in the building, you'd have had pretty long odds on it being Thieler. Oh, absolutely. We, we were gearing up to uh, do a, a, a draft hack with Luis Scott Vargas. And, you know, in your head, you sort of mentally, you know, here's Luis Scott Vargas playing against a guy we've never seen before. Yeah. You know, or, you know, maybe we've seen him, but we don't know him. You know, we're expecting... That you know we're, we're penciling Luis Scott Vargas in for the 3-0 in that draft at that point. Well, it did. But he he played he played perfectly. Absolutely, did not happen. Uh, Pichot and Kadoka back on six and two overnight. Three more rounds of draft go by rounds nine, ten, and eleven. And at that point, Teela now has lost for the first time and is joined at the top of the leaderboard by Siyoshi Fujita. And plenty of work to do at eight and three in the middle there for Scott Vargas, Pichot. Cox and Kadaoka. At that point, you're you're pretty much up against the wall. Yeah, it's, you, it's, you you can't you can't lose. You just you just win 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 in, and then eventually you run out of rounds and get to come back the next day. That's the plan. Let's have three more rounds of block constructed: twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And at the top there, you see Siyoshi Vegeta is functionally into the top eight. At thirty six, he's got two spare rounds. And you a, think, as, well, we've got it. We're obviously fine there. Right. Except, as did Francesco P Pichaleschi. Uh, Cipolleschi. Cipolleschi. They, they were both at 36 points. They were the only two 36-pointers in the tournament. 
you know, they should, if they paired against each other, they could shake hands and lose the next round and be in, in top eight. Yeah. But they had already played each other. They ended up both getting paired down. They both lost, setting up a pretty dramatic round 15. So let's see, here's round 15. At the end of 15, there you see Fujita's still on 36, Vidagiris up to 36, same with LSV. Pichon on 34 knows he has to win his last round. Cox, Kadaoka, and Sharfman all at 36. It was Sharfman who had beaten Fujita to reach 36. And then Teela, who, to be honest, had had a real sort of dip uh, in the middle of day two. He uh, w went three losses in a row, and he said, you know, I just... Uh, it was a mental sapping thing. He talked about this uh, yesterday evening. He said, you know, I just went through a period where it kind of all got a bit on top of me and I wasn't quite as crisp as I needed to be. And as a result, he found himself really on the outside looking in, going, there are any number of people who can get to 36 in the last round. Could it be me? Will my tie breaks hold up? And so we see these six 36-point players, but there was a seventh. Mm -hmm. And that was Francisco Cebaleschi. And he got paired up against Ellie Pichon in the final round. And so, therefore, Cipolleschi, as you can see, there's the final standings, 37 to everyone. Tila sneaks in, in eighth, uh, having led at the end of day one. And F Francesco Cipolleschi, poor guy. He, he, he muttered some Italian words I have not heard since my grandmother reached for a hot pot on the stove <laughs> without a <laughs> pot holder <laughs> when I was a small child. Gosh, that was a bit painful. <laughs> he, ends, he ends up finishing in ninth with 36 points. Uh, virtual top eight finish for him. Okay, so uh, that's how they got there. As you can see, they, there is the, the top eight. Now, on the left of screen there, uh, you see Luis Scott Vargas. Well, great to have him back in the top eight. One of the great ambassadors for the game. 28-year-old from Oakland in the United States. Uh, he played Tempered Steel kind of reluctantly. Uh, how did he do in Constructed? He, he went 9-0-1, 10-0-1 if you count an exhibition match against Shouta Yasuoka. Oh, that is so good. Uh, he, he did everything in his power to not play White Weenie. He said, there is no way in the world that I am going to play White Weenie, and I am going to throw every single deck I can conceive of against it until I find the one that lets me not play this deck. Yep. Right? The, pro the pros do not want to play a deck. White Weenie is just associated with, like, you know, uh, you know ca more, a more casual type of play, I guess. I don't know. There was, there was definitely a stigma attached to yes, it. there is. And uh, they didn't want to play it. But ultimately, he said, this is the best deck. Yeah, it took them 800 hours to find out what Paul Ritzel could have told them in five seconds. <laughs> but Paul Ritzel didn't play White Weenie yeah, this weekend. Yeah, and boy, does he ever regret it. He said, that's the last time I ever play six casting cost spells. There's, there's about 15 levels of pros sitting in front of us, by the way, outside on the floor. <laughs> oh, dear. So uh, that's Louis Scott 16 Vargas. 16 levels. Uh, second place was Gaudanis Vidagiris, Madison, Wisconsin, and then New York, New York. That's where he is right now. Lawyer yeah. from New York. Very, very excited for Gaudanis. I think Gaudanis yeah. has been one of the uh, best players on the pro tour for the last couple of years to, to, to not have a top eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to finally see him break through is, is very exciting for me, just personally as yeah. uh, a friend. I mean, he's had a couple of Grand Prix wins, so I mean, he knows how to, how to take events down. Tampa yep. and Denver were both limited Grand mm -hmm. Prix that he top eighted. And, and of course, won. Denver is this year, so only a few weeks back. So he's in great shape uh, in second. And then you have your top seed from Japan, Hall of Famer, Tsuyoshi Fujita. Fantastic. Uh, absolutely. So Yoshi Fujita, this is his uh, first top eight since being inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's the first Japanese player to earn a top eight, which he did in Tokyo way back at the start of this uh, millennium. He designed the deck that Moshishiro Kuroda won Pro Tour Kobe with when he became the first Japanese player to win a Pro Tour. And it's really been the pioneer in a lot of ways of uh, top level Japanese magic. He's, he's, he's the godfather of, of the community in that sense. And uh, see him getting back here. He hasn't had a top eight since 2005 mm -hmm. when he was top eight of Hollywood and top eight of London, London, which was a limited top eight as well. It was. Where and he, he was the player we followed on camera for the draft. Mm -hmm. And he made it to the final. And there he met one Jeffrey Saron of Belgium. Yeah. And got properly <laughs> eviscerated. I don't <laughs> know. If, no, he didn't get eviscerated. He got incinerated. Oh, uh, that's right. Yes. Sorry. It wasn't a black deck. It was a red deck. Yes. <laughs> it was. Uh, Saron, your 2005 Pro Tour London champion. I can tell you that the players um, have arrived there uh, at the table. They're getting ready. Uh, all sort of chosen around him. So the players are ready. So, 
I reckon it's pretty much time. Here we go then. Eight packs of new Phyrexia await. Then it's Mirrodin besieged, and it all ends back where the block began with Scars of Mirrodin. It's time for the Proton Nagoya Top 8 Draft. Thank <laughs> you.